Good evening, everybody. It's seven o'clock, and this is the news you've wanted to hear. The latest sign for the Red Cornelia Bears. We are just at the moment waiting for that young rail to come through, and while we're uh, waiting for him coming through, we'll grab a quick word with Jamie Swales. Jamie, one year in the job, and you've still to have a league match yet. Uh, yeah, that's right, but uh, I'm unbeaten as well. Well, exactly, exactly. But uh, <laughs> it's funny, yeah, for you last year because you still managed to do um, an awful lot of the track with the amateur meetings. Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, when I was brought on as promoter, my remit was pretty much for the, the things away from the Bears, really. So my season, although we didn't get started till late, we were we were really busy over the year. Um, there's probably only Scunthorpe did more than us last year. Um, we got five amateur meetings in, all with over 60 races each. So when you figure that out over a season, there's more races there than the normal race season. So it's uh, the track actually saw a lot of action last year. Um, every single weekend after the first lockdown was was full with practice days, and we had track hires. We had the uh, Team GB team coming and practicing, so it was pretty non-stop. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that came out of the conference this year is that uh, your British riders are going to be given the chance, and with you, with your a hat on with the Northern Development League and uh, obviously running these amateur meetings. You must be really pleased that finally uh, the all powering beings in this country are going to give a chance to youngsters. Yeah, that's right. It's um, it's long been needed. Um, there, there just wasn't a, a mechanism there before for the riders to come from the youth leagues. If they didn't have instant talent, it was a struggle all the way. Um, what we've done this year, um, it's great, but it's the first step. It needs to be the first step. Uh, the, the one star riders that we have in this set up, we, we can't just pick one star riders out of nowhere next year. Um, so we need to start looking going forward at Neil Batch's uh, British Youth Championship. And I think every team needs to be looking at having a youth team. And I, I don't mean a youth team like we used to, where it's people that's 16 year old who start going out in second halves. The 125 scene is immense now. Um, it has been for probably 10 years. But there's a bottleneck because people didn't have the path to get through, through National League, through into the Championship. Um, so what we've put in place now really is just that, that pathway to get them in there. Um, hopefully it will be a bit smoother for some people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, with the Northern Development League hat on, is that uh, running again this coming season? Yeah, we, we've only spoke briefly with the other managers and um, I think everybody's still on board. I can't see there being much change. Uh, unfortunately, in the setup we have with the youngsters, we all had our teams last year and several of them now have obviously uh, turned past 16 and they have to move up a level and they've They've actually missed a year's education on the 125s or the 250s. Well, I think on that, that's a good way to uh, uh, close off the interview with you today because I think uh, it's time to announce the rider. And I bet, I bet you are excited as well to see this uh, young man in the Bears body colour this year. Oh, absolutely. It is um, it is exciting. Obviously, um, losing Eric was a blow, but uh, you've got to look to the future after that. And... Um, you know, take the positives from what we can and getting someone like this guy on board is very exciting. Um, I saw him around our place last year and he, he came down with the Jason Crump training school through, um, through after lockdown and uh, it was brilliant to see. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Jamie. Uh, so, so very interesting points there. And uh, I've just been told by the um, director that uh, the man himself is waiting to come on board and uh, it's red Bull fans you're going to be excited with this young man he's uh, a rising star not just a rising star a rising superstar for the uh, julia bears please welcome mr anders rowe good evening anders hello how are you i'm doing very well thank you and uh, how are you doing in this uh, strange world at the moment yeah, it's, it's going good. Um, 
I've had a tough, tough couple of weeks. Um, we're obviously losing my team, my two teams places um, due to them not running, um, unfortunately. Um, and then I had to have an operation um, on my appendix. But other than that, we're good. We're going racing. So you're all more or less fit and rare to go and uh, back in the gym yet? Oh, well, the yeah, gym is um, at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, I've been I've been lucky enough. I've got a, a great sponsor that um I've got a set of keys to the gym so I can go twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Um and yeah, it's brilliant. Um I've only just from operation this week, uh, Monday I've started getting back to doing like a couple of bits, um doing some running, some cycling, um, just to try and ease back into it because if you, you don't want to rush too fast and um, hurt yourself. So, um, yeah, it's going good. That's great news. And uh, obviously, you've just touched on there that uh, you were set to race for Swindon and Somerset last year. And I think you were, you were thinking that you were going to be there again this year. And then all of a sudden, within days, you were left with nothing. Yeah, it was, it was, it was quite sort of tough to like take into that I knew when I got told that Swindon was um pulling out I was in hospital just after my operation and I, I was lucky enough that um I was healthy enough to go home that night um and then sort of I sort of I took it okay and then a couple of days later Somerset rang up and said oh we're not running and then work my mind just went crazy I was like I need to ride I need to ride I need to ride um and I, I wasn't overly confident that I was gonna get a place because most of the places were already taken in, in the middle league. Um and yeah, but lucky enough Red Car have um taken me and um yeah. Exciting times because I know speaking to you in the past, you you really enjoyed Red Car Red Car track. You, you had a decent meeting with Somerset in 2019 and you got 13 in the British under-19s, so it, it holds no fears for you. No, not at all. Um, I love Red Car. It's a, it's a brilliant place uh, where the track's located. It's brilliant. There's no sort of houses around there and, yeah, it's sort of just a, it's just a brilliant setup sort of thing and, um, yeah, I really like the track. It's a proper racist track and, uh, I'm sure I'll put some good moves on for uh, everyone in 2021. And yeah, I've changed a lot since 2019. Um, and uh, yeah, they'll be surprised. Yeah, we'll come on to that soon. Um, but going back to when you first started, you, you did a bit of the youth championship. You more, more came to um, people's attention when you wrote the National League. I think you did about three years ago there. Is that right? Yeah, I sort of I um I did a couple of things when I was younger um as a as a kid and um yeah I got to a stage where I was I moved on to two fifties and um I wasn't actually old enough to race them um and I got to the point where I didn't like practicing anymore um and I just got to a stage where I, I knew I was ready for racing but because of my age I I was like I couldn't do any racing so I said to my dad look less I'm, I'm less sell it let's sell everything let's sell the 250s off because i was still on small bikes then let's sell everything off let's wait till my birthday and let's let's start again uh, on the 500s and um yeah it was it was a brilliant move because i i'd never been so sort of hungry as a kid to go riding me racing me bike that much like i was like i had um maybe two months off and i was like bouncing off the walls I was like yeah let's go let's go buy me a bike and um yeah I managed to become good enough for um Len Silver to sign me at Kent and um yeah I spent a, a really really enjoyable three years there um in my first year I moved from number seven to number two and then in my second year I moved from number two to a heat leader and in my third year I managed to get from a heat leader to number one so yeah, I was really impressed with what I'd done there, and um, yeah, I really enjoy that place. So when Redcar go down to Kent, 
in the league, Mark Shield. Looking forward to that, seeing Uncle Lenny in. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that, to uh, catch up with Len and see how he is and everything, because he's been brilliant with me um, ever since I was young as a mascot riding around at Rye, Rye House. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to going back there and I'm going to go and score big. Um, I, I got, I'm keeping the engine that I've got there and, yeah, I've got some pretty cool lines. Yeah, you could also help out the rest of the lads because I think uh, there's only yourself and Jordan Jane and there's probably ever one from there. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm all for helping. If we can get the win, I'm all for helping. And uh, yeah, I think I think it'll be a big surprise to see what Kent sort of like as a track. It's a, it's a lot different to what everyone sort of imagines it to be. It, it rides a lot different. Um but obviously, I spent three seasons there, and I'm st- I'm still dialed in, <laughs> and I ain't coming out of it. <laughs> That's great news. That's certainly great news for the Red Car fans. Um, going on to the last year, obviously you said you were supposed to be ascending and uh, summer, but you were one of the the Brits that actually did manage to do quite a few meetings. I seen you at the Ben Fund, and. Uh, the under 21s up at Berwick, where you came third uh, in that. Um, but the one, the race now I'm more interested in is you actually went to Poland for three months and rode for Ravage, is it? Yeah, um, I went to when obviously I did the Ben Fund, and um, after that, sort of in England Speedway sort of stopped and uh, everything locked down, and I had the uh, I got a couple of phone calls to go to Poland. Um, one of them being Torin, um, and one of them being um, Uni Lesno, which is in partnership with Ravic. Um, they're sort of they're like their sort of feeder club to bring the youngsters up. Um, and yeah, I got the phone call and I jumped at the chance. I'm I'm not going to say no to racing my bike, and um, yeah, I jumped at that chance and I took it with both hands and. Yeah, where was we got the phone call on the Monday and on the Friday I was on the plane going. Um, so yeah, um, it was a big, a big eye opener, um, to say the least. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. It was, it was tough because I didn't have, I took my English engines and um, in the first week I blew both of them up, and um, luckily that we got sorted out. Um, Lesno sorted me an engine out to use for the rest of the meetings and practices and yeah it was a big eye-opener and I've changed a lot as a rider and grown as a person is like my um what does it call it um yeah sort of just me as a person sort of grown I can I talk to people sort of more now and um yeah it's sort of yeah I've it's really been good uh, the, the young man has become a man yeah in a way, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the good thing about when going over to Poland, because I know your dad went over there with, with you also, um, is you can more or less practice over there 24-7. And uh, you were telling us the other day that you were racing against some of the real top world, top stars. Yeah, it was... Um, I took my, my dad to come with me and um, it's probably the best thing I've done, taking him with me because... If it wasn't for him, obviously it would have been a lot tougher for me. I know, obviously, I know how to wash a bike and do everything, but just having him there to know that you can talk to someone of like your own family all the time, and there's someone there with you sort of 24/7, and if you have any problems, you can like talk to him and discuss it and stuff. And yeah, probably the best thing I've done is taking him with me. Um, because it probably would have been a lot harder for me and a lot different without him there. Um, so, yeah, I, I can't thank my dad enough. He gave up his job here in England and said, yeah, let's go for it. And, um, yeah, I can't thank any of my family enough for that, for letting, obviously, dad to go with me. And, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it was awesome. And, yeah, so then, obviously, we got there and pretty much you could practice 24 7 seven days a week um but obviously you you don't always practice that much um i was we were practicing maybe two three times a week and racing on the saturday uh so you would do like um 
you would you would practice Tuesday is like just practice, um, clean the bikes Wednesday, Thursday practice, Friday practice, race Saturday, clean the bikes Sunday, and have a chill Monday and go all again. So yeah, it was um, it's crazy to see that as well. And on the Monday when like the 500s weren't practicing, you had the kids there; they were practicing, and yeah, you could. And when we were practicing, the kids came and watched us and sort of learned stuff from like the, like obviously the world's best, um, not obviously me yet, but like the world's best, I was practicing with the world's best and sort of just watching their lines and stuff. It's, it's um, sort of stuff that some normal, like in England, you don't get to see like the big guys practice all the time and, yeah, sort of seeing, say, like Emil Sofutinov, uh, Janusz Kolodze, Smetala, and people like that practice. It's and just like learning off them and like watching the lines. Um, you learn so much and the way they ride the bike, and like, m- like all of them talked English as well, which was brilliant for me because I become really good friends with Sm- Smetala and Kolodze. And yeah, it was sort of really, really good for me as a obviously to sort of look up to them in last like couple of years going on I'm going to get there one day and then being with them was for the four months it was brilliant and yeah that sounds absolutely brilliant um are you going out again in march aren't you for preparation for the season out there yeah um we're going to uh, march time uh, depends what sort of time march um I've got my bike, I've got my, my, I built two brand new bikes for England, obviously. Um, and then I've got my two bikes for Poland that I've built as well. And um, yeah, I'll be taking them out there uh, um, in March. And um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll be doing some heavy practicing. Um, um, Cause it'll be my first sort of, my first time over there at the start, start of the year, watch it like practicing and going through that sort of stage. Cause I, I went in the, like, three or four weeks after they'd done that so it'll be awesome to see what they do there and stuff and yeah i'm pretty sure there'll be some really big practicing going on pretty much every day i hope because <laughs> I, I love racing and practicing and yeah it's um yeah I'm, I'm prepared as i can be um i've got um yeah i've got some really cool really awesome people behind me and um yeah i just can't wait to go out on track and show everyone that yeah it's gonna be good that sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, by, by the time you've been out there, and hopefully we get to me over here, uh, you, you're never not just going to be fit. You're going to be race fit, aren't you? By the time you can have a head start on everybody else. Yeah, definitely. That's the that's the plan anyway. Um, to be race fit and um, off the tapes, obviously as well. It's a it's a big thing for me. Um, getting off the getting behind the tapes and even when in practicing over there, you're, you're off the tapes all the time. And yeah, it's brilliant. Um, so yeah, I'll be using that to my advantage for when I come back over here. Um, I'm going to be practicing as much as I can when I'm there. Um, and obviously racing, hopefully, if, um, quick enough to get in the squad, um, which I'm, I'm determined I'm getting in that, um, to race again. Um, cause I got on it last year, so there's no reason I can't get in it again. So, um, I'm going for it. Um, so yeah, I'm going for that, and um, yeah, I'm just gonna take it in day by day, and yeah, just sort of live the dream, as they say. Certainly sounds like you're living the dream, and uh, you're certainly part of the dream team now, Reco. And uh, we touched on it. You know, you really enjoy the track. It is it one that you've found very easy to pick up when you've rode there in the past. Um. Yeah, it took me a couple of, um, I think I did maybe a, a, ra- a youth round there once and, or I think I did anyway. Um, I did a youth round there and I always said I really like that track. Um, and then obviously I'll come back. I, my first time I went there was with, with Somerset and I, I did pretty good there and sort of learning it because that year was my first year I'd gone to all these tracks um, like uh, Red Car, Edinburgh, Glasgow, and like up north, and yeah, I seem to take, I seem to take to pretty much all of them pretty well, and um, 
yeah, sort of after then I we did the under nineteens, I think it was there and I come third. Um and looking back on that now, um I know I made uh, I've watched the video plenty of times, 10, 15 times probably. I know exactly where I went wrong, exactly everything I did on that day that I sh like in the meeting that I did wrong. And I learned from that and yeah, but we come away with the on the third place and yeah, live and learn and I'll be hopefully getting it this year. Well, certainly sounds like you're doing everything the right way. Um, have you set yourself any goals in this country? Well, certainly with riding with the Red Cross. Yeah, obviously I had my goals. I set goals in 2019 and um, I blew them out of the water. Um, to, to be being honest, um, in my first year, I set my goals to go from um, from heat leader at Kent at number three to number one, and I did that. Um, and then at Somerset, I wanted to go from reserve to number two, and I, I did that. And yeah, I was pretty successful with that. Um, my goals probably this year are they going to same as 20, um, 20, 20s ones? Um, are going to be um, I want to get from in the middle league, I want to go from, I think I'm starting off at number six, maybe. So I want to get straight to the heat leader spot. I want to bypass number two and I want to go straight to heat leader. Um, if that means I've got to go number two in the process, then that's sweet by me. And um, yeah, but I want to be pushing for heat leader spot. And yeah, that's my aim for that league. Right. That, that's interesting that you're that you going to start off with red car at reserve. That I think that makes you the strongest reserve in the league, and uh, you'll have rode with Jordan before, so quite a powerful reserve parent. Yeah, definitely. Uh, me and Jordan rode together at Kent for a year, and um, we were together most of the time there. And yeah, we were together in the pits there, and it was yeah, it was good. And um, yeah, we should be quite a quite a good pairing, and um, yeah, should be good. And watch out, Charles, right? Because you're after his body colour. Yeah, I like Charles. Um, I like the way he's. I've been watching a lot of videos of Red Car lately, and um, most of the passes, the good part, like the big passes, are by Charles. And yeah, I've got. A, I'm hopefully I'm going to learn a lot of him this year. And yeah, um, definitely. I'll, I just can't wait to get in there and sort of learn off everyone. And yeah, should be awesome. One thing I wondered was that you know you're based in Swindon. Um, is the travelling going to cause any problems at all, or are you one of these riders that's tuned into the travelling now? Um, maybe in my first season I would have said I didn't like the travelling, um, but it's sort of part of it now. Um, obviously, 2019 season was a crazy season for me. I was racing Kent on a Monday, Monday, Somerset Wednesday, so. Uh, yeah, it was it was quite a busy year for me, and uh, I think I was uh, uh, the people in Poland told me I was the eighth busiest rider in the world, and I only raced. I haven't before then. I'd never raced out the country, so I was the eighth busiest rider in the world, and I'd only raced in Britain. So that was pretty like crazy to sort of hear, and that was just me and my dad, no one else, just me and my dad, and yeah. After a Monday at Kent, uh, he would go to work on the Tuesday. I would wash the bike on the uh, on the Tuesday in the daytime, and in the evening we would um, finish it all and yeah, and just sort of crack on as a team and get it done. Oh, fantastic! It uh, shows your commitment to uh, your race and your career. Um, obviously, moving up to Red Car, uh, if there's any potential sponsors out there, I'm sure you would be be interested for them to come on board because they're obviously they're going to get a, a lot of exposure. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, um, yeah, any any sponsor, no matter how big or small, it's a, it's a brilliant help to me and um, obviously my family helping me as well. And yeah, it's just awesome to hopefully see people get behind me. And yeah, it's it's been awesome to to meet new people in my uh, I think it's my fourth year now it's like a full-time rider so it's I've met some awesome people along the way uh, up and down the country at different clubs and yeah it's just been a it's just been brilliant 
Well, it's been brilliant talking to you. Um, I've admired you for quite a few years now. You were a pain in my, my bottom last year uh, in 2019 when you single-handed Newcastle down to Somerset when our team managed down there, but um, no longer at, with Newcastle. So fully on with Red Core like yourself and uh, looking forward to seeing you. Have you got any message to the Red Core fans? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, it's going to be awesome to um, see you again, uh, Roy. And um, yeah, I just want to say a massive um, thank you to the promote, Red Car Promotion for um, signing me and taking me under their uh, their wing. And um, yeah, I want to say um, a big uh, thank you to all the Red Car fans that have um, that are. Uh, yeah, just gonna hopefully be behind me all the all the way, and um, hopefully bring the the number one champions um, home because that's all I want to do is win, and um, I'm sure all the other boys in the team want to win as well. So um, yeah, hopefully we can bring as many um, wins back as we can uh, to Red Car, and yeah, hopefully at the end of the year be on the top of the podium. <laughs>